Hi everybody, today I want to talk about itineraries for our vacations to Disney World. I will do several screen prints and include on this video like the one that's on the screen right now just so that you can see where I'm coming from and what I'm talking about. Basically whenever Jeff and I go on vacations it doesn't matter if it's the Disney World or some other location we type up some kind of an itinerary for the trip. This helps us to stay on track and to make sure that we visit all the places that we want to go to, make the most of our time there, and keeps all of our confirmation numbers in one place so that we don't forget them or lose them. I will go over the itineraries in this video for our vacations to Disney World just as an example. Each of the parks at Disney World has different hours each day, so we like to make sure that we are going to the park with the longest hours on any particular day. Or to make sure that we go to the park with the extra magic hours on the day that they're offered. Part of the hours has to do with us staying on property. Those are the extra magic hours. Those who do stay on property get them. If you don't stay on property, you won't get them. Uh, basically, the extra magic hours are a few hours in the morning or in the evening where when the park closes and those that are not staying on property have to leave, those that are staying on property get to go in either a little early or a little stay a little late in the park after they close. It's usually one to two parks each day that offer extra magic hours and it could be like I said either earlier or late. Keeping an itinerary also helps us to make sure that we are lining up the restaurant reservations with the parks that we will be at for the day. If we we're going to be at Magic Kingdom all day it would make sense to make reservations at a restaurant in Magic Kingdom for that day or one at our resort or any other resort on property for that matter. The itinerary that we type up is a place that we can record all of our confirmation numbers as well. So is there, if there's any snafu with getting in for whatever reason, we can easily and quickly pull up the confirmation number either on our phone or on the hard copy that we may print out and take with us into the park. We also usually include somewhere on the itinerary the fast passes that we have for each park and the time windows for the fast passes. That way we also will remember when it is that we will be at the specific rides for the fast pass. Once the itinerary is set, I typically, typically go into the calendar on my phone and enter everything, syncing it up with Jeff's phone so that it will notify us while we are at the parks of what is next. Whether it be a meal, a specific ride that we want to ride, a fast pass, Whatever it is that we feel like we're going to need to get notified because we're afraid that we might forget, we go ahead and lock it into our phone. One website that we check in often while planning our vacations is the Mouse for Less. They have all sorts of downloadable forms from packing lists to sample itineraries to autograph books that the kids can make. They also include maps, resort layouts, and menus for the different restaurants. Not keeping an itinerary won't necessarily make your trip a bad one, just as keeping one won't make it a great one either. However, if you are an over planner like I am, it is a great way to make sure that you get the most of your trip while there. Once you get back from your trip, and you like to scrapbook, then the itinerary, if you've printed it out, can also become a great page in your scrapbook so that you can remember what all you scheduled and what all you did while you're on vacation. I hope this helps and if you like the video please make sure to thumbs up so that we can continue bringing you things that you like. Thank you!